And Jesus entered the temple area and drove out all those who were selling and buying on the temple grounds. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. And he said to them, It is written, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. Matthew 21, verses 12 to 13. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you are enjoying this series. I hope that you enjoyed last week's show. We did a a best of last week. I thought it was appropriate since we had uh, we had James Yeager on at the very, very, very beginning of this show. Very beginning, I think it was episode three or four. We had James on, so we did a a best of last week. Uh, The temple is cleansed. Well, first of all, welcome. Thank you to everyone who supports the show, everyone who shares this show with other people. Uh, You can go to legionofmichael.com right now. And if you go there, if you go to legionofmichael.com, you can sign up for the church security program. It's a distance learning church security program called Legion of Michael. And it'll give you all the information that you need to know. So uh, go there, click on the enroll button, and if for some reason the enrollment is not open, you'll get on a list. And the moment that enrollment is open, you will be notified. Yes, indeed, you will. And that's a good thing. And that's a good thing. Yes, indeed. And also, if you'd like to support the show, there is a hyperlink in the show notes that you can click on and you can make a donation and you can support this show because it costs you nothing, costs you nothing but your time and attention. So there you go. All right. Yes, you probably have. Well, I I would hope that you know about the story of uh, when Christ went and cleansed the temple. Now, this is right before... He gave us his great sacrifice before he he gave up his life to save us and then rose again from the dead. But this story is so important that it is is referenced multiple times in the New Testament. Now, the first one was the book of Matthew. Now, in the book of Mark, chapter 11, starting at verse 15, it says, They came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple area and began to drive out those who were selling and buying on the temple grounds. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple grounds. And he began to teach them and say to them, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it a den of robbers. And the chief priests and the scribes heard this, and they began seeking how to put him to death. And they were afraid of him because all the crowd was astonished at his teaching. Yes, indeed. And that is the book of Mark. Now, in the book of John, it gets a little bit more detailed. It said, And within the temple grounds he found those who were selling oxen, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. And he made a whip, or scourge, Some versions say scourge. The modern versions say whip because apparently modern humans don't understand words like scourge. And I don't know, quick aside, does it annoy any of you that we have certain versions of the Bible that have become an LCD version, a lowest common denominator? It's like, well, we got to... We got to make sure that the modern idiot can understand. It's like I grew up and I knew what a scourge was. And in the original version that I had, it says, You are turning my father's house into a den of thieves. And they change it here, it says a den of robbers. But to continue, and he made a scourge of cords and he drove them out of the temple area with the sheep and the oxen, and he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. 
And to those who were selling doves, he said, Take these things away from here. Stop making my father's house a house of business. His disciple remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. That's John verses, uh, I'm sorry, John chapter 2, verses 14 and 17. Now, why do we talk about this and why do we bring it up? You're like, okay, well, you know, Jesus was the Son of God and uh, he, he was the, the Messiah and it was his right. I mean, he's the head of the church, right? Uh, is the, was the Sabbath made for man or man for the Sabbath? And who is the Lord of the Sabbath? The Lord of the Sabbath is Jesus Christ. You say, well, these stories are nice, but what does it have to do with me? You have to ask yourself, do I believe, do I believe that the Bible uh, was given to us as a gift from God, both the Old Testament and the New, as a way to help us order and live our lives? Do you or do you not believe, and were you or were you not taught, that Christ is our perfect example? He came on earth in human form not only to save us, which he did, but he came to provide us with the perfect example. And if we believe that Christ is without sin, then you say, whoa, yeah, but he got, he goes mad. He was consumed with zeal for his father's house. He was angry when he got there and he found that that the temple, that the house of God was being used as a house of thieves, as a den of thieves, a den of robbers. And you say, well, you know, in the moment, he got angry. But then he got over. But what I find interesting is he took the time to fashion. It said he fashioned a scourge of cords, which means he knew what he was about to do. He saw what was happening, and he knew what he was about to do, and he drove them out. He drove out the money changers, the money grubbers, those people who had turned God's house into a house of thieves, a den of robbers. You're like, wow. I know some places like that. I know some places. I know some churches whose first, who it seems to be their very first uh Priority is uh, prying money out of my pocket. Yeah. You ever go to a church that charged you an entrance fee to go to an Easter Sunday service? I did. You're like, no way, Paul. Yes, way. Den of thieves, a house of robbers. These stories are here uh, to help you. The stories that are related to us both in the Old Testament and the New are there to provide us with examples to let us know that we're not the first people in the world to ever experience this. When you run into an issue or a problem or you question something that's going on in the world, something that's going on maybe in your church, it's easy to think, wow, this is a unique problem and it's never been encountered by anyone ever in the history of the world. And chances are that that is not correct. What did King Solomon say? Nothing new under the sun. What what will be has already been, and what is was. And uh, these stories are here for us. There are people who would tell you or try to convince you that Christians need to be silent, that they need to be subservient, that they need to be meek, they need to be mild, they must turn the other cheek because, it's, I mean, that's what Christ said. He said, turn the other cheek. But what does it mean to turn the other cheek? Now, if someone strikes you on the right side, are they punching you? No, they're, they're insult. A, a slap in the face was considered an insult. And what Christ said is, he goes, an insult isn't going to kill you. So take it and move on. It's better to just take the insult and move on. But he never said, allow them to beat you down into the ground. Because if you're a father, if you're a husband, and you allow yourself to be, well, silent, subservient, meek, mild, you say, well, God says to turn the other cheek, so that means I have to let the world just roll over me. 
I'm required as a Christian to allow the evil and sinful representatives of Satan to just roll over me. Is your body not a gift from God? You say, well, yeah. Does God expect you? Now, when we say the temple, we talk, we're in this story, we're talking about the actual temple, the temple of Jerusalem, Solomon's temple, right? But we've also been taught that our body is supposed to be a temple and we should treat it as such. So should we allow the evil men of the world to trample over our temple, to beat or destroy our temple? Should we allow that or should we preserve it? Those who would tell you, they're like, well, it's Christians should never be angry. Why should Christians never be angry? Well, because it's, it's unchristianly. Who told you that? Well, it just is. Where in the Bible does it say it's a sin to be angry? Well, it says you shouldn't hate. Hate is not anger. Anger is not hate. Those are not interchangeable words. Those are not interchangeable words. You see, Christ was angry. He didn't hate those people, but he was angry with them because they were violating his father's house. They were doing wrong. They were acting as minions of Satan. They were worshiping money. And they were taking advantage of God's children. And so he was justifiably angry with them. Now, it doesn't say in the book of John, Matthew, or Mark that Christ stayed angry all day long for the rest of his life. Does it? No, it doesn't. Those of you, who, those people out there who would try and convince you, like, well, if you're going to be a Christian, or you must not be a very good Christian because you were angry, or you must not be a very good Christian because you think you need a gun to defend yourself. If you're a good Christian, you wouldn't do that. No, actually, that's not correct at all. If you believe, uh, if you believe in what is written, if you believe that Christ is the perfect example, sometimes it is justifiable to be angry. And those who would tell you that that anger and hate are the same things, I don't care what Yoda said. Yoda was wrong. Yoda was wrong! <laughs> yes. Sometimes, if, some, if a minion of Satan, if a representative, a disciple of Satan comes along and they want to attack you, attack your family, attack your children... They want to poison your children's minds. They want to turn your children into minions of Satan. You should be angry about that. You should not turn your children over to Satan and his minions. You should protect your children. Christ said we are to be the good shepherd. Yeah, the shepherd protects his sheep. If you are the shepherd of your family, it is your responsibility to protect your family. Not to just roll over and allow your family to be either physically or psychologically abused. Sometimes Christians need to be angry. Don't get all tripped up by these these apologists, these pseudo small c Christians that believe that they need to be silent and that speaking out makes them not a Christian. If that was the case, then Christ would have been silent when the Pharisees told him to shut up. The Pharisees told him, we don't want you saying what you're saying. We don't like what you're doing. You say, well, if if we're supposed to, as Christians, follow Christ's example, his example was not to just be quiet when the Pharisees, when the men, when the world decided they didn't like what he was going to say. Did he say, all right, well, The world has decided they don't like what I'm going to say, so I'm going to be quiet. I mean, if you think about it, the Pharisees at the time were the government. They were the Jewish government. And the government of the Jews said, we don't like what this Christ guy's saying. And there are several times in the New Testament that it points out that people who were following Christ were afraid to speak out They were afraid to admit in public that they were followers of Christ because they feared the Pharisees. They feared the Jews. They feared the Jewish government that they would be punished. And Christ knew that they were 
plotting to kill him. He called him out on it several times. Those who would tell you, well, if you're going to be a Christian, you need to be silent, you need to be subservient, you need to be meek, you need to keep your mouth shut, you need to do what you're told. The government says you can't go to church. You're not allowed to. The government says you're not allowed to speak out against the slaughter of innocent children. Because if you do, we'll punish you. Is that the example that Christ set for us? Was that the example he gave us? Did he say, well, if, if, if the, uh, the minions of Satan come along and say, we don't like what you're talking about, be silent, then you should just be silent. No, he said, what did he say? He goes, if I tell them to be quiet, the rocks themselves will cry out. The stones themselves will cry out. Sometimes it's righteous to be angry. Sometimes Christians need to get angry. They use, need to use that anger as a motivator. Remember, hate and anger are not the same thing. They're not the same thing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being here today. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of the Student of the Gun audience. I'm sorry. <laughs> Strike that. Reverse it. Thank you for being a part of the Legion of Michael audience. There we go. There we go. All right, we're going to go ahead and close it out today, as we always do, with the warrior's prayer. Lord, I come before you seeking the strength and skill to overcome my enemies. Grant me, I pray, the wisdom to recognize evil, the courage to confront it, and the strength to destroy it. In Jesus' name I pray this. Amen.